We are here to witness the official handing over ceremony of assorted field equipment for use by our respective officers in the field uh, as we and continue with the fight against poaching and wildlife crime. Uh, it is a very special occasion because SeaWorld has been a partner for national parks and wildlife for this is, I think, if I'm correct, second year now. And it's, it's a great honor and privilege to have a partner that always remembers you in times of uh, need like this one. Uh, before I waste a lot of time, at this point I would like to invite uh, Mr. Sean Kans, the representative from SeaWorld USA, to give us his remarks. Before a few comments, I would like to offer some some thanks. Um, of course, to Mr. Brighton from Chedwa. Thank you, sir. You've been present at three trainings here, and you've uh, supported all of those. And you support your officers and your rangers and your leadership and your staff. Thank you. The assistant directors and officers of the department, uh, on behalf of our training group, on behalf of C. Thank you. CWAG <clears throat> itself, with its African Alliance partnership, makes this possible. It makes the trainings possible. It makes the distribution of this equipment possible because they truly believe in the cause. And <clears throat> their support of anti transnational crime causes worldwide is to be recognized and appreciated. I'd also like to thank, as, as Alex did, um, when our group comes to train in another country or we need to have people on the ground that make that possible. So I'd personally like to thank Gift and William uh, representatives of CYKAP in Malawi, as well as Chooks and Lillian with, uh, with CYK Africa. <coughs> Alex, I'd personally like to thank you. Um, had the occasion to come over here and train with, and I stress with, we trained with rangers for a week at Kasunga. And it was truly an honor and a pleasure for us to experience that time and to learn from you rangers and to interact and work with you. One thing I'd also like to say about Alex that I am truly appreciative, he was there the entire time and when it comes to rangers and it comes to doing law enforcement in the field, it's encouraging to have a leader that leads from the front and he is on the ground and he's encouraging and he's with you. So I was privileged to witness that, Alex. I, I thank you so much. It's inspirational. <clears throat> so collaboration is the key. As one, we can accomplish nothing but together as one, we can do great things. And especially looking at it from the cause of wildlife crime and poaching, it takes resources as we all know. So together, we can come together, whether it be equipment or whether it be training or sharing information. That's the only way we can stay ahead of this battle of transnational crime as well. And for that, and for your drive and motivation, I thank you, the Rangers. From an American game warden to African game wardens, we're all brothers and sisters, and we're all in the fight together. So thank you for what you do every day. So while here in country with our training group, it was an absolutely incredible experience.
teach all these things. When I left, I learned so much more than I could ever imagine from you guys. Honestly, just to use that American slang expression, it was so cool. And you guys were amazing. And your brothers and sisters that attended that taught us so much. It also instilled in us a further appreciation for the resource and why we do what we do every day. These people here, we believe in the cause. We want to see wildlife perpetuated. We want it to be here for generations to come, so thank you. So with that, wildlife itself and with the threats on all wildlife having a price on its head and the demands for the wildlife species that exist, whether it be in America or whether it be in Africa, we do what we do because we have a passion for it. As part of our continued collaborative efforts, CWAG AAP in partnership with WITA and the Department of National Parks and Wildlife have facilitated two workshops on wildlife training and have trained over 60 prosecutors, investigators, and other anti-wildlife trafficking actors. CWAG AAP and WITA will continue to nurture and collaborate with DNPW to achieve our goals of reduced wildlife crime in Malawi. I think Sean has clearly, I think, shared a lot that it is a, a collaboration and that's what really CWAC wants to do. Hence CWAC, WITA and the department. Our team acknowledges the good cooperation between your department and CWAC AAP and have pleasantly observed as that as a department you have put in a spirited effort to deal with wildlife crime. It is in this regard, therefore, that we present together with WITA and hand over this solid equipment, which we hope will be useful to our rangers. This event was supposed to be presided over by the Principal Secretary of Natural Resources, Energy and Mining, but due to latest developments, it has not been possible for him to be personally here, but he requested me to uh, represent him. So I will simply read his speech, uh, the speech that he was supposed to make here. Indeed, it is a great honor and privilege for me this morning to receive, on behalf of Malaya government, assorted law enforcement, law enforcement equipment uh, that is being donated today. Uh, from the Central uh, Central Western Attorney's General of the U.S. United States, that is, for use by our frontline staff in the fight against wildlife crime, for use by colleagues on that corner. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm informed that the donation being made today is a value of not less than 50 million kwacha, which is a lot of invest, investment. And indeed, we say thank you to the students of Arizona, investors, and to the rangers in USA who have raised, fundraised for this equipment. We do not take it for granted. This assorted equipment, which I can see it includes boots, weather coats, body armor, I see something like this, uh, very, very instrumental to our work. It will indeed uh, boost our efforts in the fight against wildlife crime in this country. This, this is coming in over and above the other strategies that as Department of Parks and Wildlife have been implementing. And this is a very good uh, complement, supplement to whatever we are doing. You may recall, not long ago, we reviewed our law. We are proud to say now we have one of the strongest wildlife laws in the region, but also we have a fully fledged wildlife crimes investigation unit whose results continue to be phenomenal 
just last week, we have managed to bust a cartel of Chinese who for quite a long time have been doing illicit activities related to poaching and illegal wildlife uh, trafficking in this country. We have also special uh, tailor-made strategic documents like the National Elephant Action Plan that is aimed at conserving, managing our elephants, National Ivory Action Plan, but also uh, we have come up with also a fully uh, fledged anti-trafficking unit and for the first time in the history of Malawi, this unit uh, includes a canine department, which is no mean achievement at all, and whose results also have been phenomenal. The canine department was involved in the busting the Chinese cartel. But also we've gone to the extent of recruiting additional rangers, some of the rangers that we see that recently recruited, and of course, some senior middle level managers. We have also been carrying out capacity building programs, tactical training, as already alluded to, investigators, uh, the rangers, the prosecutors. And I must say, as it has already been said, this is not the first time that SeaWorld is coming to our rescue. They have in the past assisted us, conducted a capacity building trainings for prosecutors, investigators, and our own uh, rangers. So the donation today is just uh, going ahead, doing more for Malawi's wildlife. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the various equipment that is in front of us that we are receiving today uh, will go a long way, as I've said, in providing our field rangers much needed tools as they carry out their work, especially in our protected areas. We need protective clothing. We work in a very harsh environment. Uh, we need the armors. We meet sometimes armed poachers. Uh, take it that your contribution is indeed going to go a long way in alleviating uh, the suffering of rangers and it is going to contribute positively to our work. Uh, we know with these developments that in SIWAC we have a long-term partner and we look forward to the continuation of this partnership for the good of Malawi's wildlife heritage. I want to assure SIWAC that the equipment received today will, will be put to the right use. As I've already said, um, let me end my remarks or my speech by indeed thanking you SIWAC, first of all, but also the students and the rangers in the US that uh, raised this equipment for us, but also uh, the people of US need also to be thanked because today we are working with uh, CWAC, but also uh, the government of US has directly been insisting, uh, assisting us. Like some of the strategies I've talked about, uh, the Canadian Department, the investigations that are in the forefront, providing us with financial resources that we needed to undertake our uh, work. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with these uh, remarks, allow me at this stage to officially declare that the donation has been received by Malawi government. I therefore 
Thank you so much. How much have you pumped in, in in terms of this equipment and how is it going to help in the fight against wildlife crimes? So in so much as this equipment, SeaWag uh, made it possible for the organization and, and shipment and distribution of it to Malawi. Um, agencies in the United States, in particular the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, uh, the Arizona Game Rangers of Arizona Department of Fish and Game, as well as the Tennessee State University Police Department uh, jumped in and began to collect these items um, through uh, our training group, which is the Wildlife Investigators Training Alliance, and we are in a uh, we're in a relationship with CWAG to facilitate and make that possible. So um, to date, um, the items came from those agencies back there that just simply have a have a belief in the cause and they want. Um, the, the rangers here in Africa to have equipment, they want them to be safe and they want them to be successful. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, like I said, what makes it possible is CWAG, so CWAG backs that, believes in the cause and supports it and makes it all happen. This is a very big boost to Malawi government and to the Department of Parks and Wildlife in particular because when we have these rangers, they need uniform, they need protective uh, clothing. Uh, so uh, what we've seen is like boots, uh, jerseys, uh, the, the weather clothes, um, which are all targeted at them to be well protected when they go in the bush. And these are the things that uh, sometimes we have had difficulties to provide on our own. Now that the partner is able to provide us, uh, it means it's a very big boost to our work. The rangers will be motivated, having been trained, having been recruited and trained, but they lack the some of the equipment that we have just received today. Good afternoon, Alex. Good afternoon, Caroline. I'm actually sitting with you after quite an interesting day, the handover of the law enforcement equipment. What does this mean to you and to the department? Yeah, this, this is uh, one of the most important chapters in the uh, life story of this department. And uh, on behalf of the director, I think it will be fair to say that uh, this is a very important occasion because we, in the recent years, have embarked on intensifying our efforts in combating wildlife crime. And to fight wildlife crime, you need equipment, you need tools, you need materials. And for us to get such a donation, it's, it has come really at a very right time. So it, it's one of the tools that will boost our morale and our intensity in, in, in our efforts to combat wildlife crime. Actually, you just taken the words out of my mouth because I was going to ask you say, how do you believe this equipment will actually enhance the work? Yeah, it will go a very long way in assisting us because there's lots of things there. Uh, there are weather courts. We have one of the coldest protected areas in Nyika and uh, it can get to minus, minus one or zero degrees so the weather courts will be very handy for the rangers in Nyika. The boots will be very instrumental. We also have an investigations unit which sometimes does risk away and the body armor that we have received will go a long way in protecting them ensuring that they are safe whenever they are carrying out their duties. So the equipment is very, very important in our fight against wildlife crime. As we take on the poachers at various levels, it will very much assist. How, um, how bad is the actual poaching? In terms of poaching has been, of late, it has been very bad. For the past five years, up until uh, in the last two, three years, at least now, the, the poaching is getting under control. But in some protected areas, it's still, it's still a, a huge task to, to undertake. But uh, with interventions like this one, we have revised the law. It has become very more punitive. So with those interventions, the poaching in most of the protected areas is beginning to go down. But suffice to say that the, the battle is not yet won. So. We, we still need to do a lot uh, to combat this poaching, to combat wildlife crime. There's a lot of illegal wildlife trafficking taking place, so when the animals are poached, 
yeah, the products are finding their way out of Malawi. And sometimes Malawi is being used as a conduit for most of the valuable items like ivory, uh, pangolin, and, uh, 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 I mean, pangolin scales, uh, rhino horn. Malawi is being used as a, a route to, to the market. So uh, besides fighting the actual poaching in the protected areas, we are also combating the illegal wildlife trade here that is taking place. So this equipment, because it, it is assorted, some of it will go into even the actual or illegal wildlife trafficking activities. Um, roughly how many rangers then do you have? In yeah, in the system we have more than 300 rangers so for, uh, distributed across the Malawi's protected areas from the north up to the south. So we, we have quite a number because we recently recruited over a hundred just last year, or they graduated in November. So the number of rangers is is high now, and we because of the high numbers, we also need more and more equipment to make sure that they are adequately provided for. Oh well, thank you very much um, thank, thank for you. your time, and thank you very much for the collaboration so far. Good afternoon. Afternoon, madam. May I ask you to introduce yourself? Okay, thank you. I'm Cecilia Sambagunsi, Parks and Wildlife Assistant. How long have you been the Parks and Wildlife Assistant? Now it's been eight years in service. So what normally do you do on a day-to-day -day, uh, uh, job? Yeah, on our job, like we used to conduct patrols, field patrols, you know? Like our duty is to protect the environment, the wildlife. Mm -hmm. So. We used to have patrols almost daily in our protected areas, like I work at Lunganija Sanctuary. Yeah. At Lunganija Sanctuary, what kind of wildlife do you have there? Um, we have different types of animals, but the small ones, we used to have hyenas, bush pigs, velvet monkeys, crocodiles, and Types, several types of snakes. And um, do you find that uh, people poach even those kind of animals? Yeah, most in sanctuary we used to have like uh, the fishermen. They do come and fish we, because we have a live inside there. So we do have those people who used to come and try to fish, eh? you know? Yeah, so we try to, we do arrest them when we caught them. So today, uh, Siwag and Rita have donated um, uh, enforcement equipment. How do you believe uh, today's uh, donation will help in terms of your job and overall maybe within the department? Yeah, of course, we, we are happy to have those equipments because like when we have um, our patrols, we need such that, like those materials to help us in our day-to-day -day activity. Like we have boots, we're happy to put on those boots in our field. We used to have harsh environment sometimes, so they help us, and they will really work hard having those materials. Yeah. Thank you so much. We are so proud to have you do such good work. And uh, Siwa definitely would like to help where they can to make sure that uh, wildlife is protected in our beautiful land. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for the those materials. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I am sitting with Sean Khan, man of the hour. Oh no. <laughs> Sean, it's been a, a long day coming and a great day. How are you feeling today with this donation? I'm excited. Um, every time I had the privilege to come back to Malawi, it's always an amazing experience. Um, so much of that's because of, of you and your hospitality and your organization. Um, however, you know, this has been several months in the making, as, as you know, from our organizing our trainings to um, when CWAG uh, agreed to facilitate this equipment distribution and you know it's exciting for me to see it come together um, and if I could just project the enthusiasm that the 
officers from the states who contributed these things had too. And I just wish I could convey that because they were excited to assemble it. They were excited to see it get here and ultimately to see it be utilized. Um, in particular, uh, a lot of the items are, they're extremely useful. Um, but like I said, when it comes down to officer safety and all considerations there, I'm particularly um, glad to see them getting the ballistic vests. Um, and, you know, and I'd like to recognize the, the three agencies who contributed that because they, they um, basically, you know, took, them, uh, took their time and efforts to, to get those together. So namely, um, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency and um, Arizona Game and Fish Department and the Tennessee State University Police Departments. So, and what was so nice, and this is back to that group effort thing, where we, ever, everybody pulling resources. Um, so, WIDA would collect it at two, two points in the United States, and through CWAG, um, that's really what made it happen and, and got it here. So, it, it's, uh, it's very exciting to see it um, from a packing room in Tennessee to it get on the truck to leave to all of a sudden here we are you know, a few months down the road and it's right here in Malawi. So uh, that's exciting. Yeah. How do you believe uh, this equipment is gonna assist um, the rangers in Malawi? First and foremost, um, back to the ballistic vests and, and a, uh, officer safety. Um, any encounter can potentially turn volatile um, in the field or if they're executing raids or whatever the case may be. Um, the first thing we want them to do is to go home safe at the end of the day. We want them to have long, productive careers where each day they can go home to a family and be able to come back and do that job again tomorrow. Um, body armor in a lot of situations has saved lives. Um, and if we can get that in their hands for their use, that's super exciting. In addition, the other items, there's equipment that can be used um, for you know, keeping dry, keeping warm, but there's also a lot of useful things such as binoculars um, and boots. And um, from having spent a week here and watching the rangers um, in the field and to get an understanding of the patrols that they conduct in the bush for extended periods of time. Um, that takes a toll on clothing and that takes a toll on footwear and everything else. So um, if this is something we can give them uh, another tool to make life even a little bit easier, then it's, it's ideal. You've touched on the week that you spent here earlier in the year. Can I just take you back and just get you to reminisce a little bit on that? And uh, after you, especially after you step back. Sure. Yeah, and you looked at uh, that training and everything that happened. What are your thoughts about that? Um, week? It, first of all, it was one of the greatest experiences and honors of my life. Um, and I can also speak beha on behalf of our, our training team. Um, and in particular, um, Steph Carnes, my, my wife and partner in, in all of this, um, we still have, we develop lifelong friends. Um, as a result of that week here, um, we formed friendships, we formed bonds, we regularly converse with people that we met that week. Um, and sometimes it's work questions, but sometimes it's just, how are you doing and how is your family? A couple other things to be short though, from, from that week, I love seeing the passion that was represented by the Rangers here. Um, they believe in the cause. And when you're training a group that believes in the cause, that makes that training so much more special. Um, and to watch that week evolve toward the end when we go from trainer toward the end where they're beginning to take things over and employ those tactics. Um, 
it's so encouraging. Um, and, you know, we hope for the opportunity to do it again. Um, and one other short story that kind of sums up why we do what we do in talking about families and safety. There was a wonderful gentleman who was a ranger that we had the training at the park that he oversees the law enforcement activities. And during the course of that, um, it was about three days after I got home. And hopefully I'm going to say his name right, Ndaono. And um, he's uh, sent me a video from his backyard where the elephants that we were hoping to see all week, um, you know, they didn't show and that's wildlife. And um, so he sent me a video from his backyard of he and his son, who I believe was three, um, an adorable little boy, um, was absolutely ecstatic to see the elephants in the backyard. And in the sweetest little voice, you just hear elephant, elephant, and he was so excited. And that's, we want those species of special concern, of course, in all species, but we want them to be here for the next generation. And, um, you know, a, uh, that also speaks on the health of the planet, the health of the state of the world. We want those species to be here at a later date. So it was a great experience. And, you know, um, and it would not have been possible without you guys. And, uh, you know, and the cooperation that, that you arranged through the Malawi Department of Parks and Wildlife um, to basically, we hit the ground running. And because of your work and CWAG support and the department's support, it made life so much better for us. So. Sean, it's been wonderful having you back in Malawi. Very glad that. Very, very, we feel very privileged as Malawians. To have well, you I'm blessed. As, you guys are the greatest. As our family, you know. For sure. And um, obviously, very happy that CWEC has got Wita as a partner in doing this work. Oh. Very grateful because your passion, you and your team, is just out of this world. Oh, it's truly and our honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I am so sure that this is not the, the last. Well, and we're hoping that definitely you'll be, you'll be back in Malawi. And absolutely. We'd love to have you back. Want to do more? Absolutely. With, we're with <laughs> we're up for it, for sure. And obviously with Stewart. <laughs> Without a doubt. Thank so, you so that much. would be tremendous. Thank you. It's been great having you around again. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank I love you. being here. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Gift Kalalan Chikwakwa. I'm the country representative for Stewart in. AAP in Malawi. Um, Malawi joined the Siwag family uh, in um, between, it was October to December 2017 when the relationship really was cemented. Our first um, event took place in December, of 20, December 2017 when we had a, a day symposium on anti human trafficking. It, that was actually a, a very exciting moment and uh, such a big eye-opener even for myself because that was when we d I discovered how big hum um, human trafficking was in Malawi but it also gave a platform for even people that are actually actors in, the, in that field because uh, an act had just been passed and they were able to debate and discuss and get to a better understanding of what that act was. You know? um, we've since uh, done quite a good number. I think we've done about five events ever since, um, culminating even in today. Um, this is the third sitting of the anti wildlife team uh, from CWAG with the Department of National Parks and Wildlife. And today has been uh, the handing over of um, uh, live wildlife uh, enforcement uh, equipment, which I think has been excellent. Um, listening to the various participants and from the various officials of the department. I think Malawi has definitely benefited from this in the sense that um, CWAG actually brings about knowledge on transnational crimes. And these are mainly crimes that, I mean, most of countries are battling with. And also there are crimes that uh, you find that uh, in most countries, the law enforcement people tend to think that they're not major crimes. 
they tend to worry about murder and maybe fraud and those other so-called big. But you find that um, on the transnational crimes, you find that they tend to be interrelated. They fund one crime tends to fund another. So the relationship that Malawi has created with CIWAG has actually opened eyes to a lot of that, but it has also allowed various um, partners and players in the law enforcement um, arena to actually be able to have those conversations, have collaborations with um, some um, family expert matters that have come from the US, have been able to partake of best practice, um, and having not to go and reinvent the wheel in some of the areas, but also get knowledge, but also get relationships and partnerships where they can always knock on their doors and get knowledge. Um, and I think that's really what I would say if there's any other African country that has not joined the Africa Alliance pa um, Partnership of CEWAG, I think that is what they're missing. They're missing the fact that they can have collaboration, partnerships, leverage on best practice from countries that have already done it and not have to do the same mistakes and, um, and also know where to go and knock when you need assistance. And over and above that, I believe that I think it's going to be, um, at the end of the day, Africa would have actually also be benefited because then within Africa, we can actually start working together because you find that, for example, for um, wild, uh, wildlife trafficking, you find that uh, moves from one country to the next country through porous borders. And, uh, and I know that that happens with the border from Kasungu into Zambia. There's, there, the border is porous and poachers will come through and we just go through and go into Zambia. But with it, they take away serious um, wildlife uh, uh, and um, artifacts and various things. And I believe that I think at the end of the day when Africa can actually participate in this um, alliance partnership, we then can actually hold hands uh, in fighting and combating and reducing transnational crimes.